Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to be doing an example of truss analysis with the method of joints uh, on a simple truss bridge. But let's start at the beginning. Trusses are everywhere. You can find them, for example, on bridges and roof structures. Here I have the example of the Patula Bridge in Surrey, especially the one in the front is a classical example uh, of a truss. The one in the back uses trusses, but then something a bit different, which is a truss arc bridge in uh, the middle section, which might be at some point uh, the topic of another video. For now, let's concentrate on uh, the trusses. Trusses are also used uh, for uh, roof structures. Here are the trusses lying on the floor. Uh, here, actually, they're cheating a little bit because in a real truss, uh, there should have been a joint in this corner and no continuous section. But it is close enough so that we can consider this a truss and do our calculations with trusses. First of all, what is a truss? I already have made a little short video on this, so I will just play this video for you. This is a truss. This is a very simple truss. Trusses are rigid structures made of members connected at joints. Each member is made to hold only axial loads. Torques or lateral forces are not allowed. Therefore, all the loads applied to a truss have to be applied to its joints. How do we analyze a truss? The first step is to find the support forces. Here in this simple case, as it's symmetric, it's easy, each support force holds half of the load. Then we explode the parts of the truss and draw a free body diagram for each of them. Finally, we look at each joint, solve the translation equilibrium, and by doing so, find the forces acting on each of the members in the truss. Now to our example, the truss bridge with our Lego man. So let's assume that this Lego man has a weight of 10 newtons and is putting all its load in the middle of the truss. The first step in all truss analysis is to do a free body diagram of the entire structure and calculate the support forces. So here is the free body diagram of the entire structure. Uh, the dimensions are just approximate assumptions here. So let's assume the bridge has a span of 12 cm, a height of 5 by 2 cm, and angles in all the triangles of 60 degrees. Apart from the free body diagram of the entire structure, in truss analysis we need the free body diagram of each part of the structure, especially of the joints. So you might see that I just removed my connecting members between joints A and B and then replaced uh, its effect on joint A over here and the effect on joint B over here. I did this for the entire structure, but actually will turn out we don't need all of this. So it looks uh, more dramatic than it actually is. Note that I did assume in my free body diagram of the joints over here uh, that all these uh, forces are tension forces in the members, so that the members are pulling uh, the joints together. We can easily see from one of these free body diagrams that one of these arrows is pointing in the wrong direction. So what will we do? We will simply calculate, assuming these are tensions, with the directions as drawn. And if math then tells us that uh, we get a negative answer, that means that our error was actually wrong and that the member actually was under compression. What do we do next? Well, first we calculate the support forces. For that, I use uh, the left free body diagram of the entire structure. 
my torque around the set axis has to be zero. I put my pivot on uh, point A and I can calculate that minus FC times the distance of six centimeters because I'm going clockwise and plus uh, the force uh, applied on E times the 12 centimeters must give me zero. I can solve this for my force uh, on the support in E and I get five newtons. Then I do the translation equilibrium in Y direction. I get that plus my force in A minus my force in C plus my force in E must be zero and therefore the force in A is five newtons. You actually see that here we had a symmetric case so we didn't need to do all of this because we could have immediately said that uh, the two forces uh, on A and E have to hold each half of the load. However, if you do have a non-symmetrical case, then you need to do this. And if you have on top of the vertical forces, also horizontal forces, then you probably also need to do the sum of all forces in X direction. Next, we look at the joints and I'm gonna start with joint A. I'm gonna do the sum of all forces in joint A has to be zero. Therefore, plus my force A, plus my force AB sine of the angle, which was 60, must be zero. I solve this for the force AB and I get minus 5.8 newtons. Note that I have a minus here. Remember, minus, you say that means compression. That means this member here actually is being compressed, not stretched. And the arrows I drew here are technically wrong. However, we're not gonna fix it because we already made the convention. If ever I get a negative answer, that means opposite as it was drawn. Also, from Newton's third law of motion, I know immediately that the force on A into the direction of B must be equal to the force on B in the direction of A. So once I have uh, this one down here in the corner, I immediately know the one up here. Then I do my sum of all forces in X equals zero, where I have plus force AC plus force AB, this time cosine of the angle of 60. And I solve for my force AC. As I had minus 5.8 for force AB, I get minus minus, so I end up at plus 5.9, which means I have a tangent in the member connecting A to C. Now I go to my next joint, which is joint B. Again, I will do the sum of all forces in Y equals zero. So up here, I get minus the force BA times sine of the angle 60, I'm opposing the side, minus the force BC times sine 60 uh, must be equal to zero. And I can solve for the force on B by C, which I get plus 5.8 newtons. According to our convention, a plus number means tension, so as I had drawn in the free body diagram. Next, I do the sum of all forces in X, so I get minus the force BA cosine 60, plus the force BC cosine 60, and then plus the force uh, BD here in the top. I solve this for 
the force on d by d and I get minus 5.8 newton. What does the minus mean again? Yes, exactly. We're under compression, not tension, as I assumed in the top right diagrams. So here is what we have so far. We have solved about half of our uh, truss structure and we could just continue uh, in the same way and go to joint C, joint D and then joint E. However, we already had figured out that this truss is actually completely symmetric. So we can use the fact that it's symmetric and simply copy over the numbers and the tension and the compression for the rest of the truss. Now, before we go away and hand this in, let's think for a moment. Does this actually make sense? If you look at uh, my bridge here, I get that I had a compression around the top and I had tension around here. Tension means I could actually take the member out and replace it by a string. Well, what do I get if I replace these blue members by a string? Well, correctly, an arc suspension bridge. So I think actually the answer here makes really sense because it kind of shows us that we could have replaced this with an arc suspension bridge. Given that my analysis led me to a different type of bridge that actually does exist, I'm quite confident that the results of my calculations are correct. Therefore, I'm gonna hand this video in and go to the next point.